Hi, welcome to Exploring Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with my co-host Anel. Anel, good to see you again. Okay. Condition, condition response number one. <laughs> yes. This is episode number 109. The title of this episode is Not Having a Free Will Sucks. Knowing this doesn't. Okay, and, and this is a very, very important point. But before we get to it, as we do with all our shows, we want to just basically take a little time to explain what we mean, what people mean when we say we have a free will. We might want to, like, refute it a little, and then why this is so hugely important. Refute it a little? Yeah. All right. Refute let, it a lot. Let's, as a matter of fact, let's refute it, refute it while we're defining it. I'm going right. to be funny on this show. Free will. Free will is the crazy, insane, and nonsensical fairy tale BS belief that we can actually make not just choices, because we make choices, free choices that are 100% independent of our genetics and conditioning. Right, and here's the thing. Can Since anybody possibly think that could be possible? People believe that. You know why? How crazy do you have to be to believe in that definition of free will. Right, and, and you want to know something? I will be the first to defend those people. In other words, it is a crazy belief. It's not very intelligent, but I would be the first to defend them because it's not their choice to have had it. But George, how can anybody with any intelligence actually come here and look you in the eye and say they believe in free will? How? That's a good question because there, there are very many ostensibly intelligent people. How? I'll tell you how. I'll tell you. You know why, why it happens? There's such a thing called motivated reasoning in psychology. It's basically when you reason I think not, there's such a thing as called insanity. Well, or, yes, it, it is insane. It's basically they're All reasoning these through our limbic, tell me their free limbic will, they're system. So they're crazier than the patients. I know. They're, they're reasoning through their fears and desires rather than through reason. You know, and that's, that's basically what it amounts to. So... All right, and, and, and the reason, okay, like, so if you've got, let's say, genetics, 50% of our personality is, is controlled by our genetics, okay, over 50%. So if you've got our personality making us who we are, and 50% of who we are is based on something we have absolutely no control over, I think you can understand how free will is I have a new impossible. way of defining, okay, who's the most evil person you could think of? Hitler, Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein's son. George Bush. He killed Osama bin Laden, Sandersky, Bernie Bush, Madoff. Bush, Bush, like, you know, they, 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 they destroyed our world. He's the most evil world. guy you can think of? He invaded, he no, killed no, a million people. tell me your honest people. truth. He, he invaded the wrong country. Right. So invaded. do you realize that people with free will, who believe in free will, they think these evil people deserve to be in hell for the rest of eternity? I wouldn't say that to, about anyone. So if you were George Bush, Adam for Adam, Quark for Quark, Neutrino for neutrino, boson for boson, evil mind, evil soul, his parents, his genetics, his conditioning, you would be, you would have been him. Absolutely, absolutely. And you would have acted the same exact way. So you can't and, and if he I had know. You, and he could be you. I know. So I that's know. another way of refuting free will. And and, and so that's my new greatest and now way. what you're saying is like so no like, room for free will. So there are evil people in the world that we can't blame them. We've got to no, absolve everyone. I hear people everyone. saying, "Oh, Jerry Sandersky's in jail." I said, "What if you had his parents?" Uh, he said, well, I, I wouldn't have acted the way he did. Well, say your name is Jeff. So Jeff wouldn't act like, but Jeff, you're putting your mind in his life. That's what you know, they say. I oh. would not have acted like he, but he had his mind. Exactly. Exactly. All right. And you so want to know no something? Right. That. And I'm going to just cut, all right, cut all right. to the chase. The reason this is the most important thing in the world Ever. is because everybody's completely deluded. This amounts to a whole new consciousness. And that's why. All right. So we're going to go right into this because, like, basically there's a big confusion. A lot of people think, oh, my God, like, they're challenging our free will. That sucks. It's not that knowing that we don't have a free will that sucks. It's actually not having a free will that sucks. Let's start with that. Why does, why does not having a free will suck? Well, if I had a free will, I would choose to be happy every sec millisecond of my life. I would uh, be good all the time. I would just choose good thoughts if I had a free will. Think about this. I could, Think about I could do whatever I want. If I have a free will. If we had a free will, again, like There'd you're be saying, no causality. you would never have, a, you would freely choose to never have any negative feelings and any negative thoughts. You know, you would choose to, like, with your kids, with your spouse, with your friends, be a complete angel, always being completely good who, to them. Who amongst us would, would get divorced if we had free will? Yeah. You would choose to stay in love. If we had a free will. I decided will, I'm in love. Yeah. My Think wife's in love. We're in love. Nobody would fall out of love. They would just choose, right? Free choice, free will, free choice. 
I've decided to, to, to always be in love with my wife. If, we, if you had a free a will, if you had a free will, you could be in love with every woman in the world, and your wife could be in love with every man in the world, and you'd be completely happy with it because you'd oh. have a free will. If, okay, I see where you're going. Yeah, if, if we had a free Back will. Back to what I said. If I had a free will, I would choose to, first of all, I would choose to explain this better, <laughs> right? And we would also choose to be happy every moment of every day. Yes, think about it. Come on. Any time, like, the average mood watching the average sitcom is about mildly depressed. The average level of happiness in the world is 70%. If we had a free will, everybody would be 100% happy 100% of the time, okay? And even the happiest people in the world are only happy about 50% of the time. All right, so, like, you know, not having a free will sucks, okay? It really does suck. We admit it. Okay, now why are we doing this show? Because it's not about not having a free will. It's about... Knowing that we don't have a free will? There you go. Knowing that I don't have a free will is paradise. Well, it's not paradise because you don't have a free will. I don't blame myself. Right. I'm home free. Exactly. So here's the thing. So is everybody else. So, like, if you, if you, don't, you don't have no a free will... No matter what world. happens, it really doesn't matter either. It's not my fault. Right. Well, all right. We don't have a free will. Like, because we don't have a free will... I'm not morally responsible. I'm not fundamentally responsible. We I'm do, doing the best I can. Yes, That's it. Because we don't have a free will, we, do, we make mistakes a lot. All okay? the time. But we don't have all to feel bad about the silly mistakes. That's it. So like, so, like, fine. We don't have a free will. It sucks. We make mistakes all the time. Knowing that we don't have a free will... As my, you know, very intelligent co-host and I'll just oh, said. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for that nice comment. He gets it, absolutely. If we know we don't have a free will, we're not going to add insult to injury. We're not going to just make the mistake and on top of that blame ourselves and punish ourselves. We're not going to like, it's not like, tell them why it's not licensed to do whatever we want, though. We can't just say, I don't have free will, I can do whatever. Just say no to free will. Right. What'd you ask me? If I had a free will, I would have been listening. Absolutely. All right. Tell us, tell the people what? Okay. Tell the people why, like, when you don't have a free will, which and we you, don't, and you don't, and you know you don't have a free will, that's not licensed. You know, that's not. You can't just say like, well, I don't have well, a free you, will. Well, you're you're still responsible. You just have blameless responsibility. You're not to blame. That's what I'm saying. I never, I never said we weren't responsible. I never said that. I never said you said that. Oh, okay. <laughs> So right. I, we are responsible, but uh, that's not just because we're responsible doesn't mean we have free will. We're just playing the part of an actor in a play of the role of being responsible for our karma. Right, and another way of pragmatically. Saying that, right, and another way of saying that is like we are not fundamentally responsible for anything because we're not in control of anything. Okay? You could be the most morally abusive person in the pla on the planet, torture, and you're not morally fundamentally responsible. But, but. And the big you you'll know, be put thing away you have to consider is like, yes, fine, we don't have a free will, but what we do has consequences, all right? If you behave in a certain way toward the world, toward other people, other people are going to behave the, you know, in a similar way or whatever way toward you. What you do, if you, if you walk around and are not careful in the dark, you may stub your toe. You know, if you're not careful with things, you know, you may get hurt. So, like, so again, not having free will, knowing that we don't have free will, doesn't give you license to do whatever we want. It goes back to the hedonic imperative. People go towards pleasure and away from pain. You have no choice in the matter. So if you are a dangerous individual and you stalk and kill people in Central Park and you're found and you're caught, you're going to be removed from society because people have the hedonic imperative. They don't want to go into the park and feeling nervous so you're going to attack them. Right. Like you would be if you were a vicious uh, grizzly bear on the loose. Now we would fear you because you're very dangerous. You're George Ortega on the loose in the park and you kill people. And we need to, put, but we can fear you, but we're not going to hate you because you're just doing what you do. Right. You act like a crazy nut and kill people. That's a good. So point. now you got to be separated from my hedonic imperative. I want to sleep at night, and I like to play baseball with my kids in the park. I don't want you there. You're dangerous. Exactly. Just like a polar bear would be. Right. So or in other a words, like, tiger. and you want to know something, but he, a lot of people. So what's commit, the big deal, dude? A lot of people commit crimes because they buy into this free will illusion. In other words, they say, well, like, what you What are you know, talking about, George? No, no, because people, people say, <laughs> like well, you're not, you know, people suck. People are, are selfish. People agree to whatever. So, like, I'm going to get them back. A lot of people think like this. So, and that's why some people choose to kind of, like, attack other people. This Adam Lanza. Adam Lanza, he must have been furious with people in general. He took it out of, the, of these kids. If, if Adam Lanza, if, if murderers, a lot of violent people didn't believe in free will, there would be absolutely no reason no rationale for them to like basically like 
you know, take their hostility, hostility and express but what's it. this nonsense about you saying people aren't responsible without free will? Where would you get that? You never said that, right? People no, have said that. No, no. Some, some people we fear. We want to make this clear. Without free will, which there isn't, so society does not have free will, people are still responsible for their actions. Yeah, what I'm you're saying. You're just fated to end up in a psych ward or jail if you're screwed up. Right. What I'm saying is like. Doesn't mean it's your fault. No, no. But like, for example, we're not just fundamentally. We're not fundamentally responsible. In other words, if nothing that we do is up to us, you can't blame us in any way. So how does it important? Like a lot of churches, a lot of religions, they say, well, you know, if you don't believe this or you don't believe that, you're going to suffer eternally after you die. You're, that's it for you. You can't say that anymore. Because if no, if nobody has a free will, it would be completely unfair for God to punish anyone, even a day in hell, for what was completely faded. So it all comes down to the hedonic imperative. You're going to do what gives you the most pleasure and the least amount of pain. Yes. So uh, let's go on. Okay. Why is this the most important topic in our world today? Oh, sorry, I skipped Where? ahead. How do, uh, how do you reach people about this when they argue from desire? All right, that's, all right, that's so, a good one. So again. We'll talk about the next topic after. Not having free will sucks. Knowing that we don't have a free will doesn't suck because it helps you to avoid a lot of pain. But why don't people get this? Because people are, they argue from desires. They want, people feel safe in a society where we have laws and rules and order and stuff. And people are afraid, you know, you can't blame them because it's not up to them. They don't have free will. But they're afraid that if we get away, we, we overcome, we transcend this notion of free will, society, the whole world is going to collapse. It's going to, everything is going to fall apart. No, it would be much better. Explain how. Why? Well, with free will, it's going to collapse because everybody's going to, I mean, it without causality, collapse. they would be total insanity. If there was actually free will, everybody would wake up tomorrow and decide to do something. They wouldn't know what to do next. There would be no order. There would be no causality with free will. It's only because we don't have free will that things make sense. All right, that, that's, I agree with you, but that's a little esoteric. That's oh, is a little, it? Right. Yeah, the, basically well, like... Well, if I had free will, like, you know I like ice hockey, right? Right. I would just decide to try, try for the Rangers tomorrow. Right. Even though I'm 41. All right. Because I wouldn't have causality. When you don't... Or actually, wh- next season, I'm just going to go to the giant training camp and just say I want to be the next Victor Cruz. You're watching the news. We're, we're explaining I don't why, have the causality. We're explaining why we don't have to worry about society falling apart. By, by, you know, understanding we don't have free will. And basically, you started off with this. Basically, we are hedonic creatures. Our fundamental drive in life, one of the strongest ones, you know, is to seek pleasure, avoid pain. So if you've got an entire society working like that, then we, we're not going to allow either ourselves or other people to just do what, what we want if what we want is going to threaten the, the happiness of other people or our, ourselves. That's a very powerful you know, kind of consolation, kind of like assurance to people that are afraid of overcoming this. No, society is not going to fall apart. We're not. Gonna, we're not going to let it fall apart. You know, we're going to. We're going to like. Some people tell me if there's no free will, why do I get out of bed and do anything? All right, and you know what the answer to that is? Because I know like, what the See, hedonic, the pleasure principle. If you try staying in bed all day, try try. First saying of all, yourself, let's say you'd have to have the money to have such a lifestyle. Right. First, yeah. Exactly. Try so like you know. Over, and then even, you can't, because you, your, body, your body just starts moving. Exactly. I've tested that. I told you with my, you know. Yeah. <laughs> your so, body just starts doing things. It's great. You don't have to think about it. Okay. Um, it's on autopilot. So, again, like, let's, let's just, like, basically, like, we, you know, like, we're not, a lot, a lot of people think that we're kind of, like, just, like, um, you know, just like robbing people of something that's very valuable. We're not robbing the world of something that's very valuable. It's something that, that we don't have, okay? So, like... Yeah, how could you rob somebody of something they don't have? Right. And, and we're, we, we acknowledge, we admit, not having free will sucks. It absolutely sucks. If I had a free will, I'd be blissed out every moment of the day. If you had a free will, you'd be blissed out every moment of the day. But what doesn't suck... What, as we're saying, we're going to reiterate, what doesn't suck is understanding this. Because, like, to the extent that we buy into the free will illusion, we're going to blame ourselves, we're going to blame others, we're going to feel remorse, regret, guilt. You know, it's horrible. Jealousy, resentment. The, the, the belief in free guilt. will creates a lot of unnecessary pain. If, if we didn't have the, if nobody bought into it anymore, this planet would be a lot happier. Don't you think? I have no choice in the matter but to sit here quietly. All right. Well, <laughs> what else? Now, all right. What, um, 
why does thinking you know, we, we have why does thinking we have a free will all right now all right all right so again like let me reiterate not having a free will is horrible i mean it, you know it's like we are puppets we are puppets we're muppets we're robots we're mannequins we're automatons we're like actors you know we're not the authors what about people who say i believe i have free will and determinism they're both compatible it's completely insane yeah, that's right it's completely insane. one or the other we'd be the that's first like saying i have them. a little free will yeah come on no that I, means you believe in free will i know no free will means you have zero that's zero point zero zero to infinity exactly no point oh oh there's no free will zero all right you know we we've dealt with this i hope you understand by now that Yes, we agree with you completely. Not having a free will sucks, but believing you have a free will when you don't also sucks. It probably sucks. It doesn't suck more than not having free will, but it's it's like it's it's much much more harmful. Believing than you have free will and you don't is insane. All right, we're gonna like let's right? talk about it's in, it is insane because basically and it's say, nonsense. Yes, say I mean, I mean. If you want to live your life based on a lie, go ahead. Right, but the because, truth is gonna ca catch up to you. Well, this is the, going to catch up to everybody. Well, you want to know something? I don't right? know what year, but... All right, the universe, it wasn't our choice to, to have figured out that free will is an illusion. No, but it's a, it's a growing tipping no, point is coming. What, what I'm saying is, like, the universe, who controls all our thoughts, God, the Big mm -hmm. Bang, whatever you want to call it, has made everyone believe that stuff is up to us. That's insane. That's insane that the universe and he, and is And the universe has also that. decided... Cause and effect that starting the year 2009, 2010, people started to talk. You know, you started the meetup. Right. And uh, the time is only going to get further into the future, more and more against free will. It's like, it's like the people who believe in free will believe in uh, candles when the light bulb was in invented. I mean, they're just on the wrong side of history right now. Or they're still selling uh, horses and buggies, and we're inventing the car. Exactly. If you believe in free will, you're in a house of cards, and you're falling down. And it's going to be over with soon, so you might as well join us. <laughs> yes. And so you ask yourself, why would the universe confuse us so profoundly? Because like it's a timing like, question. Why now? No, no, because yeah, because like the yeah. universe, it's not the first time the universe has done done this. I yes, mean, keep going. That's universe good. did this. Like it had us believe the world was flat. It had us believe that the the sun revolved around us. That but the that, earth was the center of the right, solar system. But that kind of stuff. I mean, who cares? You know, it doesn't really. Uh, well, relate Copernicus to our, and Galileo cared. No, no. But what I'm saying, unless you're planning to to fly a spaceship to the moon and back or something, it just doesn't matter. You know, they got thrown out of the church. Or, those or if guys. You're, if you're sailing around the. But like, all right, this this thing of human. This is not an inconsequential inconse delusion. You know, this affects who we are. No, you make a good point. There was a long, long period of time where the universe thought made human beings believe the world was flat. I know. Then in 1492, the universe made a guy, compelled him to get the money from, try to get it from Spain, then he got it from Italy, and he sailed around the world, told everybody. So the world wasn't flat. So Christopher Columbus came. We're the Christopher Columbuses of no, of no free will. That's all. We are the chosen. The universe We have to come back and tell everybody. Enel and me and a few other people, essentially mainly me, then Enel, then a few other people, chose me and Enel and a few other people I'm just along for the ride. It doesn't really matter. To bring this truth to the world. And, you know, like, I enjoy being chosen like that. I, I can't feel boastful. I can't feel arrogant. I don't particularly like it. I wish I was just normal. Well, I, to, to, I, but I, I have no choice. I did a happiness show I saw show that I had to do this. this. I have no other. What else am Me I going to do? Me too. I did a happiness show before this. The reason I gave it up is because, like, I felt that, well, all right, happiness is good, but, you know, the world needs help. So, like, I'm doing this out of fundamental uh, uh, Ironically, not, not believing in free will has given me happiness. Yeah. I'm not blaming myself for all the stupid mistakes I've I made know. in my and past. And we're kind of like, we've been doing, this is like, again. In other words, I can be depressed, but I'm no longer depressed that I'm depressed. Think and about when I'm angry, what you just said. I'm no longer angry that I'm angry. Think, yes, tell them. Tell them the truth. Why aren't you no longer angry that you're angry or depressed that you're depressed? Because I don't blame myself if I'm depressed. I'm not depressed that I'm depressed. I have no, uh, it's, just, it's just chemicals being released. I have no choice. You don't blame yourself. Like Benjamin yourself. Libet, L-I-B-E-T, L-I-B-T. Well, Google and Wikipedia him. Tell about the Benjamin Libet uh, study. All right, I'm going to tell about Libet and the ones that came after him, because the ones that came after him are far more con conclusive. Oh, there Back are? Which around, one? Oh, I don't know the names, but like... Well, just tell me what the general Libet, gist of it is. Libet discovered that maybe 200, 500 milliseconds before you make any decision, the brain has already activated... Let's say it's a decision of pushing buttons. The brain has already active, activated the muscle system. Right, so I'll do the, the experiment. I'll say to George... Responsible for that I'll, choice. I'll have... Uh, 
the unconscious electrodes hooked up to George's head, right, all over. Right, right. And I have a machine that reads brain activity, neurosynapses. Okay. And I say to him, "There's a button there and a button there. And when I show you a hot dog, you're gonna press no, no. No, no. Basically, oh, if you, I, if you, I if you want a if you want a hot dog or a pizza, no, how no, did I, this go? Sorry. This one, the, this one goes like. Know. There's a clock with a with a. Oh yeah, that's what it is. With a, an arm that's going really fast. They say like. Decide when you're going to, um, you know, move your hand or something. And I'm reading and, your brain activity. Right. And notice exactly where the hand is on the clock when you do it. So they do that. And they report that. And the researchers find out that before they are conscious of their decision, you know, 500 milliseconds before, the researcher already knew. Now, 500 milliseconds, some people say, well, that might be a technological glitch because that's a little thing. More recent experiments show that you can researchers can know the decision up to 10 seconds before the person's So aware. in other words, before he decides and presses the button, I see bra he has electrodes on his head hooked up to my machine. I'll see the activity, and then he'll think that he's deciding when unconsciously the chemicals of the synapses of the brain were already released. Exactly. Before, moments before, milliseconds, whatever, before he became aware of his own biochemical changes. Right. Did I say it right? It's the first time I've ever had to discuss it. Yes. Yes, so the biochemical right. changes of your brain have changed, and you only become aware of it millis moments after and, it. Yeah. And essentially, you've got to understand, another salient point in this is that it's the unconscious. This neuro neurological activity that's causing your hand to move and stuff is happening unconsciously. You're not aware of it. So if you have the unconscious actually aware, of, you know, making the decision before you're aware of it, clearly you don't have a free will. You didn't make the decision. All right, again, like, the reason this is important, like, instead of, like, we get depressed, because, like, we wouldn't get depressed or, or, or angry if we had a free will. But because we don't have a free will, the universe ma makes us do that, and fine. So the universe is fine saying, all right, I'm going to keep making you depressed, but I'm going to be a little nice to you now. Now, like, when I make you depressed, I'm not going to make you depressed about feeling depressed. I'm not going to make you angry about ang yeah, being angry. Yeah, but, but the universe is saying, like, in order for when you... When I'm to, depressed, I'm just depressed. That's it. I don't want to... In order for you to have this great gift, you're going to have to give up your delusion. The universe is saying, I know I made you feel that way. I know I made you conclude How that. How can you be upset with yourself or angry at yourself for being in a certain state when you're not the responsible party of that state? Exactly. You're really the actor and you're the star and the observer of this movie. Yes. You're the, and, yeah, and you've, uh, you're watching the movie and you're starring in it, but you're also observing it. Now, some people can say to me, if everything's predetermined, isn't that depressing? And I say, why go to the movies? When you go to a movie, it's already made. So if you rent a movie, why not just watch the last scene? Because what makes life so wonderful is how it unfolds. You're correctly how, right. And how the story is so... Just because your life is predetermined doesn't make it any less fascinating. Or if you buy a book, hopefully mine, which is called Free Will, The Ultimate in Nonsense, but if you buy a story, like a fiction book, why not just read the end and see how it turns out? It's already predetermined, but... People read books for the joy of the flow of the roller coaster ride, of the ups and downs, how the story is told and, and how, you know, how it unfolds and vice versa or why we go to the movies. That's a very good point. So in other words, like, it's not that life is a movie that is upsetting or just depressing or whatever. It's the fact that the universe, to the extent that we interpret it that way, makes us feel, you know, basically, it's like, in other words, that everything is predetermined is you know, it's just an ob objective fact. If the universe makes us, like, upset at that fact, then it's because we don't have a free will that we're becoming upset at the fact. But again, now, to sell this idea that we don't have a free will, the benefits, to the extent we understand that we don't have a free will, if the universe happens to make us upset because everything is predetermined, if we don't get that, like, that doesn't really, you know, we can enjoy, like Anel was saying. So you're saying life is like a movie. Well, yeah, like, yeah. So, so the best movies are the best storytellers and vice versa. Right. Right. Tell, all right. And now my co-host, like, he's the producer of a, a Manhattan live call-in show on Manhattan's premier cable station, MNN, Manhattan Neighborhood well, That's Network, on this one right now. Channel 56. We like to be live every other week, but not in the winter. It's once a Absolutely. month sometimes. But it's, yeah, when it's warm right. out, we do it every other week. So yeah. this is a live call-in show, 11 o'clock every Wednesday. You know, then it's because we got to... MNN2, 56 on Time we, Warner. We've got some meetups. Hopefully we're going high definition. We've got some meetups. There's a meetup that I started April 7th, 2010. It's going into its third year, Manhattan. Um, 
The Sony building. The name of your meetup is Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. Yes, the same as this show. Google it. It's called Exploring um, the Illusion of Free Will. It's it's in Manhattan. And you can meet us. In the Sony building, 550 Madison Avenue, the first Saturday of every month, okay? And now just started another meetup in Manhattan. You know, that's just started, so it hasn't gotten on the ground. It's called I, No Free Will. I started a Just say no Plains. to free will. The, the, the meetup I just started, we had one, one, um, <laughs> we had one, um, one meeting last month. Now it's time month. to be funny it's and called, entertain the people. It's called, what is it called? Um, outgrowing the free will fairy tale. I wanted to give it a build. Entertain and, the and people. And this meetup is about people who already get it. Because the one in Manhattan is about people who don't understand, so we debate it a lot. This me new meetup is primarily about people who understand it, but want to know how to integrate it into their lives to be benefited from it. So I see a culture war coming soon. The free will people versus the no free will. And the question is... Do you get it or not? Because the people who believe in free will are totally insane. And uh, I think it's better to live... I got something in my eye, but It's better to live on the side of truth. It is. If, if you value truth... Cause like, but they may not get a it. A lot of philosophers are trying to like come up with bogus experiments that basically prime people in believing they have free will. And that these experiments are going to show that when people believe they have free will, they're going to cheat more on tests. It's essentially bogus. It's priming. But people are, some people, some philosophers are saying, well, yeah, free will is an illusion, but it's a good illusion. No, if you, if you value truth, and I hope you do, because truth is really, you know, our, our greatest ally in this world. If you value truth, you'll understand the importance, not just to your life, but to the whole world, to overcoming this pernicious, insidious, harmful, Odious. terrible, universally... Acrimonious. Yes, horrible, horrible, bad, Animosity bad illusion. <laughs> terrible illusion. If we had a free will, if I was God, I would have never done this. I don't know, the universe, you know. So, like, but again, so now, the hope, since we don't have free will, we can only hope that our message is getting through, and by this time next year, the entire world will get this, and through this knowledge, we'll create a much, much more wonderful world. Amen. Amen. All right. Just say like, no to free will. Just so yes, and like again. And don't compare your life to anybody causal, else because what was faded for them was faded for them. What's faded for you is faded for you. Yes. Be happy. All right. We're out of here.